So as we've been doing the singular value decomposition, what we've seen is that we often don't need um, as many columns as our original data set has. We can kind of get away with fewer columns. Um, and so this singular value decomposition underlies this other analysis called a principal component analysis. And so before, right, when we had that data set, we saw, hey, I can really get away with one column. And, uh, and that kind of tells me everything. And so what I might say is that, well, there's one principal component in this data. Even though there's 10 columns, there's only really one column worth of, of information. And so a principal component analysis, or PCA, is going to use the SVD to do that for us. And if I head over here to uh, sklearn, they have all of these different decompositions, and we're going to be looking at the PCA, which is based on uh, the single value decomposition. It's going to make all of these steps easier for us. So I'm going to first just import this thing. I'm going to say from sklearn decomposition uh, import PCA. And then I want to have some sort of data frame here. I'm just going to make it from scratch. I'm going to say pd.data frame and um, I'm going to say numpy array uh, or a range. And I'm going to go from um, let's have uh, 10 columns and uh, 20 rows. So uh, I should have 200 values here reshaped. So I want to have as many rows as necessary in 10 columns. That's good. And, uh, and then like before, I'm going to say my columns equals A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Uh, and that not quite add up to, and, and then what's a list is why, sorry. Let me just do that. Great, so I have all of this here. And um, actually one of the things I'm going to do is uh, I want to see what happens when I um, analyze the principal components here. And, and something that you might sometimes see is that we're going to break it down into both data and a key. And, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look at the first half of this data frame and say, if I uh, kind of break that down so I have both a data and a key from here, how then can I use that key in the second half? All right, so I'm just going to split this in half for now. I'm going to say data frame one equals data frame dot I location. And I want the first 10 rows. There's my DF1, a little bit shorter. And then I'll just say my DF2 is my second 10 rows, right? So I'm going to say that's the second one, um, ones, and then I have that right there. Okay, so let's let's try this. So I've imported this PCA, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a PCA object like that, PCA. And uh, there's some options here that I'm eventually going to go over. Um, I'm going to come back to that. Um, if I scroll back and look at what we did before, we saw that when we were analyzing a data frame, we would get out these two pieces, right? We would get out the, the new data, which generally has fewer columns, or at the very least it has some columns we can throw away. And then we have this key, uh, which we can use to interpret that. And, and really I'm gonna start calling these keys, this key, our principal components. And, uh, and so I was doing some math on here to get both of those. And, but these are really the two pieces we, we want, right? We wanna transform our original data into this new data. And then we wanna also pull out this key. So I'm gonna show you, how, show you how to get those two pieces down here. Um, first off, I could say uh, pca.fit, um, and I'm gonna use my data frame one. So I'm gonna do that. And fitting gives me, uh, let me just peek at what I have inside of here. So often when you do fitting in sklearn, it gives you all these different um, things that are populated that end in an underscore. And, um, and what I'm looking for is components, right? So I was telling you that those principal components are, are really kind of like that key that we saw before. So I'm just going to peek at that. I say pca.components and and that is uh, something I could throw in a data frame if I wanted to. And before we would truncate this, right, we might try to figure out, hey, I only really need the first two rows or something like that. If I want to, up here I can pass in, in components and I could say I want two of them, right? I'd end up with two there, or I could have three, um, however many I want. And, uh, and so that's good. So I have those components. And maybe I'm going to put that in my um, e data frame. Right? This is also going to let us interpret our other data. Okay. And um, then 
how can I actually get my new data frame like that doesn't have the, the 10 columns in it, that's the simpler one. And, and for that, I'm gonna do the transform, right? So fitting uh, gives us the components or, or maybe kind of the key for interpreting the new data, right? And then transform actually gives us the new data. The new reduced data so let me just take a peek at that um maybe i'll just run it like it so and so this gives me back this array and i can put that in a data frame as well and um and so maybe i'll call this my new data one df right because all of this came from this data frame one Great, so I'm gonna do that. And, uh, and maybe I can put some columns on this even. Maybe I would call those things like that's principal component one and principal component two. And the way this works, the earlier principal components are always more important. So let me look at that. I'm gonna say data one df. And I see there I go. And, and so if I wanna reconstruct the original data, I can. What I would do is this, I'd say, uh, data df and then dot product with um with my key df right and I, guess, I guess i should call it data one df and uh, why is it not happy there well let me look at the shape of these two things i'm gonna look at the shape of that one and the shape of that one and uh and that should be fine right if i try to multiply those together why why is it complaining i think it's complaining um in terms of uh, matplotlib right or in terms of pandas i'm sorry um, I think that's going to be fine if I actually pull everything down into the NumPy level. Right, then I can actually multiply these two things. And uh, and you can see this isn't quite right, is it? Uh, I can see that each row goes up by 10 relative to the previous row, but each row has all of the same values. And, and that's because the PCA and, and SKLearn does it a little bit different than the SVD that we saw earlier. Uh, what it also has is this mean, right? And if I look at the mean, you can see that here's where I'm really, really capturing that um, within a given row, each value is one more than the previous. And, and so if I really want to do this properly, I have to add it like that. And, uh, and this is going to do that whole broadcasting thing. So it's fine that this is just one row. And, uh, and then what I should be able to do is I should be able to create a data frame from this, right? And then, if I round that, maybe uh, this is like maybe I might call this like the reconstructed data frame equals this piece. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe I'm going to call it um, something that actually fits on one line. And so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to say my rebuilt DF. And I can see I was able to get back to that original thing that I had. So that's all good. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is this number of components. And right now I've said there's three, right? I mean, if I did this all again, let's say I said there's like four, then I would get four rows for my KDF. I would get four, um, four principal components up here. I'm just going to make that a little bit shorter. Right, I would get those there. And then all this would still work out, then I'd still repeat it. So what I often want to do is I want to figure out, well, how many principal components do I need? And if I look at uh, the PCA again, if I say dir on it, PCA, it, it's trying to tell me. It's, it has this um, field, which is, let me see here. Um, it is this explained variance ratio. And so I'm going to look at that. That also gets populated as an attribute when I run this. And I can say PCA dot explained uh, uh, variance ratio. And this is really telling me how much information I get from, from each column, right? So I really see that all the information is coming down to just one column. And, and so one of the things I can do is when I, when I pass this, I can either pass a number here, which if I, that I do that if I know exactly how many I want. Or I could say something like this. And what this means is, well, give me as many components as necessary um, to capture 90% uh, of the data. 
right? So if I do that again, and I kind of run down here, um, you know where I ran astray. Sorry, I was trying running through the code too fast. It was right here. I need these number of columns uh, to be right. So here, I guess I just have like one component, right? So I can do that, and um, and then in this case, I'll just have the one one value, right? I can still reconstruct it. Um, now, in general, right, I may have noisier data, right? Like let's say instead of this, I had uh, numpy dot random uh, dot uh, normal. And then I want the size, or let me just see what the shape is here. Um, so I'll say like the size equals, I still want 20 rows and uh, 10 columns, right? So if I do that and then run through all of this again, let me actually, <laughs> this keeps messing me up. I'm not trying to put column names on there for now. I think that that makes it harder to experiment. In that case, right, I need a whole bunch of columns to explain what's going on here. I guess I need five of them, in fact, to be able to explain 90% of the variance um, in my data, right? Because they're all, 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 it's all just noisy, right? So let me let me go back to my other example. Um, that's gonna be useful uh, in general, right? So if I go back to this, great, let me just do a restart and run all until I get down to the end. I wanna talk a little bit about this fitting and transforming, right? So here I'm doing it in two separate steps. I fit up here, and then I transform down here. Um, what you're often going to see is this other method called fit transform that combines these two things. And so I, I could do this. I could say something like pca.fit transform. And I want to do that on my data frame one. So this will be my new data one DF, right? And then I could, after that, I could pull out the key DF from. Um, where was it? I guess that was, uh, how did I do it before? I, I had to get these components, right? Let me grab this. So I can do it in one step like that. And this should also be a data frame. What am I doing here? This one should also be a data frame like so. Right, and um, and, and one reason for doing this is that, separating these out, is it's very common that I'll want to just do fit once to determine that key that ends up down here. And then if I have other data, I'm going to reuse that. So I'm going to say something like data2 uh, data frame equals, I'm going to run the same thing, but I don't want to refit it, right? So what happens if I use the key I learned on the first data uh, with some different data, right? And, and, and and this data is pretty similar, right? The data uh, two frame, data frame two actually came from the same table as the original thing, right? So if I look at this, I have that. And then if I try to multiply that by my key DF and then add in, um, and then add in my mean, what's gonna happen here? And, and I think I need to do the values again. I have values here too. I should be able to reconstruct that half, second half. And, and, and I was, right? This was what was in the second half of my original data frame. And this all worked great because that second half of my data frame um, really followed the same pattern as, as my original data. So I'm curious what will happen if I, if I try to do this. What if I have a different pattern? Um, for example, um, let, let's say I have, uh, um, let's do this. Let's create like a, a new DF and I say PD.data frame and uh, let's say numpy.zeros and then the shape of that will be uh, the shape will be we need it needs to be the same. So I may have 10 um, actually let's say like three rows and 10 columns, right? So let me just see how this looks. Great, and I'm gonna make up some new data that doesn't really fit the original pattern. So let's say that my new, in my new data frame, I have, um, let's say the zero row contains all fives, or I'll say like it contains all, yeah, I'll say it, actually let's have it contain all 100s. Great, so I'm putting hundreds in there. And, and this is a different pattern, right? Before we were really seeing that um, 
there's this pattern of each each kind of cell was one more than the last one. This one I'll say is negative 10, new data frame dot I location um, of two equals, um, uh, this one I'll do an A range again. So I'm gonna say numpy dot A range. And, and this is gonna be like the good pattern, right? Where it was like 15, or here I'll say it's like 10 plus um, five, something like that. Oh, well, what happened there? Uh, I misspelled I location. Great. Okay, so for this new one, maybe I'll actually just call this like my data frame three, which doesn't really fit the prior pattern. I'm going to run into more trouble when I want to use that same key for encoding and decoding it. Right, so I'm going to call this data three equals my PCA dot transform this DF3. Okay, so um why did that not work there we go i just need to rerun it okay so it has that new thing and it's really just like one column and, and then i can uh, multiply that by my uh, by my key right my key df dot values and then add in my mean again mean underscore and let, let's look at that so i'm going to say pd dot data frame Can you see what happened when I when I had this key trained on my original data? One of the things that it really learned is that within a given row, the values always increase by one. And so when I encode and then decode with that key on data that doesn't really fit that assumption, you you can see it's kind of getting the average right for that row, but it's imposing that pattern of kind of like this ending one by one. And then the same thing here, right? So it's imposing that pattern even though I had constant negative ten. The one case where it does well is where I still have that, right? Then it encodes it, it perfectly, right? So um, so generally, right, if I'm doing a PCA and I get those principal components, that's going to work well if I want to analyze other similar data. If I switch to very different data, well, then those principal components might not mean much.